Hey everyone, those pesky minions got inside uh, the UUOP headquarters this week and because of that we had some issues with Skype, so Darren Hunter's audio in this episode and Darren Hunter and Ron's audio in the next episode isn't the best. We are working on getting rid of those pesky little yellow fellows and hopefully in two weeks' time normal service will be resumed, so please bear with us. We hope you still enjoy the two shows we've got coming up. Universal Orlando Resort for over five years, you are listening to the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 205 of the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. I'm your host for this show, Darren, and joining me today, we have Lee Malaby. Hello everyone. Tracy Malaby. Hello everyone. And surprise, Hunter Malaby. <laughs> <laughs> Through a long series of very confusing and arguably unfortunate events, yes, my last name has now been changed. Happy to be here, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? I'm good, Tracy's. I'm suffering with a, a heat headache. But oh, yeah, no. still are you. We have a heat headache here too, cold Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've got Floridian temperatures at the moment. It's currently whatever 27 degrees Celsius is in whatever you guys use. Hot as the hobs of hell, I think is the phrase. (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, before we cool off with the ice cream debate, then, haha, uh-huh. we have some producers' club birthdays. Tracy, take hey, it away. We d- oh, real, say? real, real quick, Darren. I just want to uh-huh. say these, these guys are complaining. 27 degrees Celsius <laughs> is approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh-huh. Yes. We would kill for 80 degrees Fahrenheit here in Florida. Yeah, but we don't uh-huh. normally get that. No, bear in mind we normally get like two degrees. Uh, well, maybe a little bit more, maybe three. We're not set up for it over there. No, no. We don't have AC or anything like that. Up until Just like if it snowed here, we would all die. <laughs> How often do you guys have to cut open a tauntaun to put a young kid inside of one oh, yeah. to keep him warm overnight? Always. <laughs> Say, up, up until 10 minutes ago, my laptop was complaining heavily by uh, kicking the fan on and not mm-hmm. going off. I was a little concerned at the time, but I've got it all under control. Finally. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right then, birthdays. We have a plethora of celebrations this month. Now, we have a belated birthday for Luke Bennett. His birthday was June the 26th. And coming up, we have Stuart Mallet on July the 21st, David Wilson mm-hmm. on July the 23rd, Drew Gergic on July the 26th, and Gina Nicholson on July the 28th. So lots of celebrations. Happy birthday, everybody! Happy birthday, Happy birthday everybody! Woo! Woo. Woo. That's a lot of people to give the bumps to. It is. Do Americans even know what the bumps is? Ah. Oh. Uh, goosebumps? No. It's a, tr- uh, an English tradition of where you get hold of whoever's birthday is and you get hold of... One person gets hold of well, their well, arms. The, usually oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about this one. Yes. Then you break the glass on the bar and then what? you stab them. No, no. Right? <laughs> no, no. No, no. You smash the back off the floor as many times as however yeah. old they are. Basically, you dislocate their arms, uh, the, the shoulders and the hips by flinging them <laughs> up and down in the air. And All right. Well, the time. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Moving right. on. Well, I hope everybody <laughs> celebrates that way this year. Um, all right, and let's move on to a Floridian, a Floridian, a Floridian Fortescue ice cream debate from Meg. Hi, everybody. This is Meg and Annie from Chicago, Illinois. We're here at Florian Fortescue's, and we're super excited. Between the two of us, over the past couple of days, we've tried all of the flavors, and other than the stomach ache, um, we've decided <laughs> that both of our favorite is the clotted cream. And, and also the chocolate raspberry is really good, but the clotted cream is probably the best. And in terms of the butterbeer debate, which I know it's over, I'm pretty sure that both of us like the frozen the best, but we couldn't find that anywhere. So I don't know that was indifferent. Um, anyway, thank you so much for all of your time for our patient, and yeah, bye. I don't know what happened to Meg's message, but I had a nightmare actually editing that so we could actually hear it. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> 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 I think you should actually take it one step further and do one of the auto-tune remixes on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be pretty fantastic. I forgot yes. what you said now. What was it? Clotted cream? Clotted yes. cream. Yes. Yeah, I don't think two anybody's... Votes. Two votes for clotted cream. I don't like clotted cream. So anyways, Apple Crumble's so. still in, in the mm. lead. Good. Yes, and we'll retroactively take your frozen uh, <laughs> uh, butterbeer 
as well. That was pretty much a landslide anyways. It shouldn't have been Hutt the winner, but anyway. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you very much for that, Meg. Uh, don't forget, we still want your ice cream debate entries. So... So if you want your vote to be heard, just record a message on your phone telling us who you are, where you are from, and what is your favorite Florian Fortescue ice cream flavor. Hmm. You can you email us that at podcast at uulpodcast.com. Or alternatively, go to Tracy, because for some no, reason they gave both bits there. Go on, I don't know what the hell <laughs> happened there. You can go to speakpipe.com, or speakpipe even, uh, slash podcast, and you can leave that there. Sorry about that. I'm not quite sure what happened with the script there. That's okay. I'll make you pay. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love having this power here now because as soon as I say this next word, then a uh, sound clip plays. <laughs> so, <laughs> news. <laughs> See how that works? That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our main topic for this show is another Halloween Horror Nights maze announcement. It Tracy. is indeed. Yes. Uh, Universal Orlando have announced the fourth maze that will appear at Halloween Horror Nights 26. It'll be based on the 1981 Rick Rosenthal film Halloween 2. Uh, Mike, Michael Myers even will return to the Halloween Horror Nights in an all new maze that will appear at both Universal Orlando Resort and Universal Studios Hollywood. Michael Myers returns in Halloween, Hell Comes to Haddonfield, a maze that's bigger and filled with more menacing scare actors than the original top-rated Halloween maze. It'll begin with the final scene from Halloween, where Michael Myers is presumed dead after falling from a bedroom window, only to disappear from the ground. Da, da, da. <laughs> it's Sorry. like disaster it's the disaster <laughs> show all over again <laughs> uh, guests will dodge Maya's lethal knife at every turn as they step into iconic scenes from the film all culminating in a horrifying finale go to uuopodcast.com to find out more now Darren Hunter yes have you seen this film no uh, no I have seen it it's been a while it's on the list to go watch it again it's terrible yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are scrambling to go watch it again now. Mm. We watched it announced. I think we watched it last year. Yep. It's awful. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what it is great for? A good a good like bit of scenery, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it mainly takes place in the hospital and houses in hospitals are pretty awesome. Yes. So yeah. Could we argue though that this is a little bit too soon for us to go back to the Halloween franchise? Mm. Mm. You could, but you know, no matter what we do, it's up to them. I don't think so, because yeah. it's only been, what, two years since they did the last one, and with it being a direct sequel, because mm. it literally mm. starts off where the last one finishes film-wise and house-wise by the sounds of it. Yep. So, so. Um, I'm going to give a little plug. I mean, I spoke to Mike Aiello recently, and he gave us a sort of little bit of stuff about the house itself, and the, the finale, spoiler alert, uh, in involves someone being on fire and apparently they are going to somehow do that effect. Ooh. Mm-hmm. They're actually going to be setting scare actors on fire. <laughs> That's why more people have been hired than ever this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we lost another one. Jim, you're up. <laughs> yeah. So, Darren, real quick, go ahead and tell us what are your, your most anticipated out of the announced houses real quick. Oh, out of those ones so far. Um... Could you rank them? It's tricky. Um, I think that I'm most interested to see what they do with the Exorcist. Because um, it's going to be a cerebral, we think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I've always loved the, the setting and, and the theme of uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I'm um, also very interested in that one. Uh, so those are, my, those are definitely my top two on the list there. It's weird because we've um, still got... How many have we still got left to announce? Have we had four or five? This is five. We've had Long Walking Dead, Exorcist, yeah, Chance. Well, t- chance, right, and for all it's been announced, it hasn't really been announced. Yeah, but they said it's a house and a scare zone. Yeah, but we don't know any details yeah. of the house. Exactly, but it has been verified that she gets one, so... Mm. So we're pretty yeah, much at the point where it's going to be all originals that are left to announce then. Um, yeah, I think there's another IP or two to go, actually. 
You think they're only going to do two original properties this year? Two or three, yeah. And then those are the strong rumors, and the people that have been Cause... talking about it have been right in the past. So, Okay. And so far this year, so. They're going to really go and retro with it this year. If you look at all the, uh, other than The Walking Dead, all the IPs that have been announced this year have all been sort of 1970s stroke, early 1980s. Yep. Should have been the Usher. The icon should have been the Usher oh, this year. Yeah. No, no, no. They can save that when we go back. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. With the, uh, stronger, the, the only other really strong rumor is Trado. It's going to take a sharp left turn into American Horror Story territory. So. Mm. Well, Ash in the chat room has just asked, is there any chance of an Annabelle house? Now, I haven't seen that film, but I've heard it's terrible. Um, yeah, but I, the real story I think is there's a, I think there's a possibility of a conjuring house happening still. Oh, I need to see that. That would be stunning. I, I think, think that would uh, great from all three movies. American Horror Story is a little little too late at this point, isn't it? You'd think, think have a drop uh, Yeah, you'd think, but they've uh, they've been wanting to do it for a long time. And the uh, so-called Uber house has not been mentioned yet. Uh-huh. has not been revealed, so... Um, it's very possible that I could spend multiple seasons just like The Walking Dead house. Is that what you expect uh, it to be? That's American right. Horror Story, yeah? Yeah. Hmm... It's just rumors and speculation so far, but we shall see. Mm. Do we think this is the last year of the Walking Dead house? Uh, I have we, heard that. We've said that before, though, too. So, but I think yeah. this year points to it even stronger than any other year. That the fact that they're because doing we're going to get the year round. Seasons. Uh, yeah, but then they're doing all six seasons this year. It's like let's go out with a bang. Mm. Yeah, we said that two years ago too. And then they'll use all the props out of the house this year to build the Walking Dead walkthrough attraction that Hollywood have got in Terminator 2. Maybe they'll just get the burning guy from the Halloween house to run through the Walking Dead house the very last night. It'll be amazing for the guests who get to see it, but the rest of you guys, it's just a smoldering mess the rest of the evening. Hmm. See, there's been big rumors about a pur- the Purge coming back this year, but I think with everything that's going on, I don't expect it to come back. Scare zone, if anything. Mm, be not, yeah. Just with all the shootings and stuff, I think it would potentially be in bad taste, and I think the oh. Universal are very wary of that. They they can very easily do that in a scare zone without any guns if they want to do it, if they want to go that route. So, um, they I, think the, I think it's pretty anonymously agreed though that the purge works better as a scare zone, anyway. So isn't yeah. it? Yep. But is it so. difficult to say because the only house we've seen was last year's, which was a quick chuck it in there because scream fell through. This is true. And even I quite liked it, but keep in mind, I don't have a lot to base it off of. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go ahead and uh, move on here. Uh, Islands of Adventure recently received an award from TripAdvisor. Wait, you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth. <laughs> um, Islands of Adventure was recently chosen by TripAdvisor for the second year running as the best theme park in the world. Now, I hate to rag on Islands of Adventure, but it really isn't. It's not the best theme park in the park. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, TripAdvisor recently announced that the winners of its Traveler's Choice Awards for amusement parks and water parks and the votes are in and Universal's Islands of Adventure is number t- uh, number one worldwide for the second consecutive year. <laughs> yeah, I don't mm-hmm. really get that. But winners were chosen based on millions of reviews and opinions from the world's largest travel community. Can I just ask how old well the reviews actually were, though? recently surely for the last year well those are the guests that are this is the traveler award right so these people islands of venture is getting the reward based off of their recommendations and reviews right yeah Yeah, Mm -hmm. so obviously they're doing something right i think it's just you know there's still a lot of people that haven't seen hogsmeade and that's enough of a draw regardless of what we think of the rest of the park yeah and maybe the least popular of the park the less people will complain about it. <laughs> it's not as many people there. Because that's pretty much what people do on TripAdvisor. Very rarely do you see people just go on there and say positive things. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. But like when we uh, stayed at that Cinema Land Hotel, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The monumental movie land hotel. The best hotel in Orlando. Uh, you should really give it a go. I think <laughs> it was, I loved it. I think the days in Lakeside that isn't there anymore, which was the first one we ever stayed at, one of the reviews said it smelled like a thousand cats had peed in the corner of the room. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that All bad. Right. It wasn't that bad. 600 cats, maybe. All right. Yikes. Um, 
<laughs> well, let's move on here quickly. Uh, two things at Universal Orlando Resort recently opened in the last week. We'll tackle the second one of those first. Hunter. All right, let's talk about it. On July 14th, Universal Orlando's fifth on-site hotel opened to guests. The Lowe's Sapphire Falls Hotel at Universal Orlando Resort is the fifth on-site hotel. I just said that. The newest hotel is a thousand-room Caribbean-themed hideaway and will feature the destination's largest resort-style pool with a water slide, cabanas, and a fire pit, where they're also you know, going to put... Fifth? This is the fifth on-site hotel. It's crazy. In yeah. two hotels in pretty much, like, two years. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And a fire pit, where they're going to put the dude from uh, Halloween 2. The pool <laughs> is surrounded by two sand beaches, a picturesque waterfall, and a breathtaking lush lagoon, which will take guests to Universal Orlando's two incredible theme parks and City Walk via water taxi. Ooh, this is also the fifth on-site hotel. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Yes, the fifth one. That's like another there one. Four was before, and years. now this one. Yes. And now there are five. The hotel will also feature several unique and immersive dining experiences. Uh, exciting news, I will personally be staying there next week. I'm going to trash the place, and we'll give you my full review on episode 207. We are excited to hear, Hunter, because it looks stunning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get a lot of pictures. It looks yeah. really, really nice. There it will does. be a blog post coming out at uupodcast.com this week that Travis went over yesterday, I do believe, mm -hmm. and, and got a lot of pictures of it. It looks gorgeous. It does. Yeah, I heard if you can get on to the beach ball chandelier, there are some very rare Pokemon up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Would you say that it takes balls? Ooh. Because ah! <laughs> you got to go to the Pokestop to get the Pokeballs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right then. Oh, you know what? As of right now, this should be Pokemon free. Because no one's had time to submit anything there. It just opened. Yeah, true. So if you want to repray it from Pokemon, here you go. And sorry about that, Hunter. I'm sure I've just caused you to start twitching. <laughs> I'm I'm actually losing my mind. I'm going to cancel my reservations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You haven't made a reservation yet, have you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I booked it, uh, like, five days ago. You? I booked it on Friday. Well, you never told me. Oh. Well, surprise! <laughs> Hello, live show people. <laughs> and surprisingly, it's not the first time that's happened. Mm -hmm. No, no, of course not. Darren was the next item, man. Well, secondly, and I think more importantly, Skull Island Reign of Kong has officially opened to guests after a few weeks of technical rehearsals. Oh, yeah. Take it away, Tracy. Thank you. Yes, the Today Show will live at Universal Orlando Resorts Islands of Adventure. The best park. Apparently. Trip advisor. Um, on Wednesday, July 13th, to mark the, grand, the official grand opening of the resort's latest attraction, Skull Island, Reign of Kong. Uh, the new attraction is a combination of high-tech ride vehicle, screen-based sections and animatronics, and Hunter got to ride it recently. So, as we've heard Darren's review, we thought it was only fair to hear Hunter's. So brace yourselves, I thought it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if any of you guys follow me on social media, you might have seen my initial reaction, and I really, really like the ride. Um, actually, when I first got off the ride, I said it was probably top three in the entire resort. Okay. I think I backed off that a little bit because for me to place that, I had to bump off one of my favorite attractions, which was The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. But I feel very, very comfortable saying it is in my top five at Universal Orlando. I hear the complaints that some people think it's short. Um, personally, I found it to be the length that they promised, which is about five, six minutes. Which is what it is, and it's weird that I've, I've seen a lot of people say it's one. it feels quite short, and it's, they said it's the longest ride on property. I do have some complaints. I think Darren really covered about everything I really liked about the attraction. My one major complaint, though, is after you get outside of the 360-degree projection tunnel, there's about 25 feet of just completely unthemed projection wall. And that really stuck out to me. Um, it's weird. I wasn't crazy about that. 
But the actual audio animatronic of Kong, I think he's amazing. Uh, very, very visually impressive. And even though, you know, it's only, uh, I guess, almost like a bust of Kong where it's his, his shoulders on upward, it's still so impressive. The thing is so massive. And I was just, I remember, you know, when uh, Jurassic Park, when Ellie Sadler and Alan Grant pull up and they see the Brachiosaurus off in the distance and they like scramble to pull off their sunglasses? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was me with my 3D glasses. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just such a cool moment. I will say, my very first time through the attraction, the scare actor got me. So if you heard a loud man when I happened to go about two weeks ago, that was me. <laughs> Hunter, Ash is asking, how are the animatronic drivers? Which one did you get? I got, uh, I believe his name was Jinx. He's very New York, you know. Um, I was towards the back of the ride vehicle. I didn't really get a chance to see the the actor or the audio animatronic up close, but I appreciated his narration. Um, I thought it actually added a bit to the story. Mm-hmm. But it's very much, um, I guess I would describe them as, if you've rode Star Tours and you know how C-3PO is on an attraction like that, then that's pretty much what these guys do too. Yep. Yeah, the, the cool thing, though, is that they interact individually with the people on the screen, though, too, which is pretty neat. Like, they have yeah. their own dialogue set up for each each ride vehicle. Uh, the 3D is easily the most impressive on property, I feel. Um, mm-hmm. It is, I'd say, aside from Spider-Man, which, once again, I initially thought this was better than Spider-Man, and I've kind of backed off of that a little bit. But I think the 3D is the best, Aside from, once again, a Spider-Man. So, very, very well done on that part. So, where are you actually putting it in your, in your list? Um, if I have to rank it, I've got Forbidden Journey up there. I've got Revenge of the Mummy. I've got Spider-Man. And then I'd probably put Kong in number four. The top three fluctuate all the time, so I'm not really going to rank those. But I would definitely say top five, but Kong is probably number four. Number f- And Darren, you put it at number two, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, under Forbidden Journey. Well, thank you very much for that review, Hunter. Uh, speaking of Reign of Kong, it's time to go over to Maureen for an autism at the park from Skull Island. Hi, this is Maureen Deal with Autism at the Parks, and I'm reporting from Universal Orlando Resort for the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. And today I'm at Islands of Adventure, and I'm standing outside the Reign of Kong attraction. It just opened officially last week, and I was lucky enough to ride it this morning. Guests under 36 inches may not ride this ride, and children between 36 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Guests may remain in their standard wheelchair throughout the ride or they may transfer. Now the ride does not accommodate motorized wheelchairs or ECVs or otherwise known as scooters. There is only one working truck that has the wheelchair accessible attraction so your wait will be longer than the typical guest here at Reign of Kong. The team member told me that they will eventually have two of the trucks will be uh, wheelchair accessible but at this time only one of them is. Guests with service animals should see an attendant for assistance. Also, if your family member uses the attraction assistance pass or the AAP, you will enter the attraction through the exit, so you will miss all of the interactive queue and the immersive experience of the queue. So keep that in mind. I highly recommend this ride. If you're easily scared, this might not be for you. Uh, On a scare level, I would say it's about like dinosaur at Animal Kingdom. Them. It can be loud at times, and you, your vehicle will move around, but not a whole lot. It, you will rock, but not too much. And again, this has been Maureen Deal for the Unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast, signing off from Islands of Adventure. Thank you very much for that, Maureen. And it's uh, time for a quick break, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the eighth wonder of the world is returning to Universal Orlando Resort. So let our friends at Fairy Godmother Travel take care of the resort reservation. 
They are a Universal Parks and Resorts specialist, as well as being an authorised Disney vacation planner, and their service is free to you. From the awesome Cabana Bay Hotel to those other hotels run by a mouse, Fairy Godmother Travel can book all your Orlando vacation needs, so you don't need to miss the chance to see the amazing King Kong in the flesh. And please make sure to let them know that you heard about Fairy Godmother Travel because of UUOP. Because every UUOP referral helps us to continue to bring you the greatest universal coverage. Contact them today by phone at 832-284-4002 or toll free at 888-939-642539 or go to fairygodmothertravel.com. Let Fairy Godmother Travel make your next vacation magical. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Welcome back, and now it's on to email questions. Uh, real quick, Darren, if I can just chime in real quick. Listening to the Autism at the Park segment reminded me, the music for Kong is probably, aside from the Harry Potter music, the best attraction music they have in any of the resort. Really? It's so good. I want an album of it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about recording a bunch of it so we can just play it on here. (laughs) Yeah, I put it on the level of it's not quite as iconic as the Jurassic Park score, the Harry Potter score, once again, but it's as far as original music, because supposedly it is original, they didn't pull it from the Peter Jackson film. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really, really impressive. Love it. Yeah, and it feels really epic, and it just suits the the area there perfectly. Does it feel jarring? Especially at night. Oh, man. Does it feel jarring when you move from sort of Toon Lagoon into there, into Jurassic Park. Well, if you're entering from Toon Lagoon, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to enter from Jurassic yeah. Park. <laughs> well, and even if you do, it's not... It, 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 it works pretty well. I don't know why or how, but it does. I, I, I assume it probably helps having that huge splashdown from Dudley do right kind of masks the transition between the two pieces of audio. Yeah. Uh, that could be it. It's definitely a good possibility. But, all right, let's move on to email questions. Hunter, take the first one. Sure will. Hey, guys. I'm a really big fan of the podcast. It is nice to know that I'm not a freak for being obsessed with Universal Orlando. You're not a freak. We're here for you. No, you are. You're just the same as a freak with the rest of us. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I am making my third trip to Universal Orlando this August, but first trip as an adult. And I was wondering if you can tell me any tips about Cabana Bay Resort where I will be staying for the first time. I'm in my mid-twenties and going with a friend the same age. I see that there is a bowling alley and a cool pool situation. Do you know what the times these are open, as well as the restaurants and bars there? These times are not listed on the websites. In terms of partying, we're big drinkers and partiers. Do you have any tips about nightlife slash res- uh, restaurants to drink at CityWalk and even cool drinking spots at the parks? Thanks for taking the time to read this, and keep up the great work, guys. Thanks, Michael Hillman. Mike, I'm or, or Michael, excuse me. I, I'm not much help with you on this one, man. Uh, Darren, you're probably yeah. Darren's <laughs> the drinker. I resemble that remark. His first trip as an adult. I've had one trip as an <laughs> um, adult, and all my future ones are definitely not going to be as an adult. Right. I am no longer an adult. Okay. Unless it comes <laughs> to alcohol, and then I am. I've never um, been an adult. No. It's overrated. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you'll be sad to find out that the bars closed pretty early at Cabana Bay for some weird reason. Maybe it was when I stayed. It was off-season. Maybe they didn't stay open as much, but um, in our experience, I think they were closed by, like, midnight. Is that early? Yeah. We yeah, all... since bars are legally allowed to stay open until, what, it's either 2 or 3 in Orlando. I believe it's 3. Really? I suppose right, okay. a broad city walk, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think, if, like, from the hotel's point of view, you don't want people getting... Ex, you know, fill in the blank with an expletive that means drunk as hell in the hotel Rather of drunk. waking people up. So that's probably where that comes from. Well, but if you do want to get drunk as hell and wake people up, what you want to do is get an Uber, right, and go to the <laughs> nearest liquor store. Uh, yeah. There, get a bunch of your own liquor, and then bring it back to your hotel room. It'll be cheaper and more fun. <laughs> yeah. And then enjoy the facilities. Um, and then, according to Ash, you can take a wee in the ice machine. <laughs> yes, that does happen in Orlando. Yes, um, it does. Yes, um, but as far as partying, um, I, I haven't actually personally been to any of the clubs 
I don't do like clubs really, but um, I, I always uh, Fat Tuesday should start paying me. But I always recommend Fat Tuesday. It yeah. took you a while to mention it. I know I was waiting for it. Yes, one eighty acting. Yes, one yes, eighty acting. Two shots of Everclear. Uh, they're only a dollar each, so do it. I also want to say, you know. I don't know anything about drinking, but I know there's this great location called Pleasure Island up the road that you can all go visit. Hunter, that closed about 10 years ago, if not longer. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have a sweet disco tech. Carry, carry on. <laughs> I, I would like to recommend a particular drink, though. Mm-hmm. The Hurricane from Pat O'Brien's. Oh, yes, I can vouch how that, strong that is. And it's a really nice drink as well, though. And because I wasn't mm-hmm. finished, it was packaged up to go for me as well. <laughs> so I don't think that was a good idea, Tracy. Was uh, no, I wasn't. You were rather tipsy that night. You were, and you were. I could have drank another. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're into yeah. beer, um, mm. the NBC Sports NBC, yeah. Grill and Brew <laughs> is the place to go for that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, there was no shortage of alcohol at Universal, and they nope. They don't care if you get drunk, as opposed to Disney. It seems like you can drink a million drinks drinks at Disney and not get drunk magically somehow because they put like nothing in it <laughs> but, yeah oh, and then because is... uh, obviously you've got all your your Wizarding World brews and your yes. Springfield brews oh yeah Duff oh I can highly recommend Duff regular I think that's the thing isn't it over Disney that mm-hmm. Universal do and I'm not even a drinker but obviously talking about it a lot on the show over the last few years that they do have a lot of like signature drinks as well it's not just you know you can get a beer here or you can get perhaps Blue Ribbon or whatever it is over there. It's mm-hmm. like you can go and get specific beers in specific mm-hmm. places. Yep. Yeah, one's made just for that, and yeah. then you cannot get those anywhere else. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they also have a lot of signature mixed drinks as well um, that you can get at a few different places. Uh, Shea Alcatraz is one of them. Um, and uh, how am I blanking out on the Irish bar's name? Uh, Finnegan's. 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 Uh, yeah, Travis is going to kill me. Sorry about that, Travis. <laughs> I see you're in the in the chat room here. <laughs> yes, Finnegan's served a nice pint. Um, but yeah, they have signature drinks like the they have like a what is it, the Mind Eraser, the Men in Black Mind Eraser. <laughs> um, they've got the, uh, the the Jaws drink that has like you know it's a, a blue curacao mainly drink oh. that's got a splash of grenadine in there. Is that the shark? Um, is it called the Shark Attack? Shark yeah. Attack, yeah, I believe so. How did I miss um, that one? I know. Yeah. I just I must have just <laughs> spotted beer and just stopped at that. <laughs> so a lot, lot, lot of interesting things to drink mm. there for sure. And then uh, when did you say he was going? Was that? Uh, August. When did you say he was going August? Uh, so mm-hmm. I think because obviously if you go during horror nights, there's even more there as well, isn't there? Yeah. Anybody yeah, in the chat room, room got any suggestions? <laughs> we should have asked him um, to begin him. <laughs> I don't know but Travis isn't happy with Darren. How many drunken nights did we spend in there? Exactly, that's the problem. <laughs> that's how you know Finnegan's is the best bar. I forgot their name. <laughs> <laughs> Confisco apparently used to have happy hours. Yeah. Um, don't know if they still do or not. Uh, Emeralds does a, a happy hour. Uh, they offer discounts on their appetizers as well, so that may be a cool place to stop off. You don't really need to be dressed all fancy to go in, even though know, it looks like you d- you need to. So. Sorry, Darren, do all the hotel bars close early? I I think they do. Right, oh, so it's not uh, a case of hotel hop then. Yeah. Because that would have been fun. Hmm. But I, I, I figure if any of them stay open late, it's probably hard rock. Yeah. Yeah. And by that we mean they close at 10 instead of 9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you do Party don't... hard. I suppose if you don't want to go... <laughs> Off property, and you can't be bothered to go to the liquor store and stock up. When they're calling last orders, you could just order a crap ton, and then you set for yeah. the night. <laughs> I guess you just sit there with an arm full of drinks. Yeah. I'm trying to think because there's the new one, the new one at Sapphire Falls that's just opened. Is that the Strong Water Tavern? Yeah, I've heard good things about that one as well. Hmm. Yeah, like you say, I think not, even not being a drinker, I know there's lots of places you can get a drink. Yep. Yeah, you yeah. have no problem with that at all. Cool. There you mm. go. Bad Tuesdays. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not allowed to take it back to your hotel. Yeah, so drink it fast. <laughs> 
and the security guards will all watch you on the Darren. Chug, chug, chug. <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> oh, that's still an awesome story. Yeah, definitely. That was ages ago now, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. For anyone who doesn't know, Darren, when we were staying at the Royal Pacific, wasn't it? You went in on your own on the night mm-hmm. and uh, got a drink, decided to try and take it back to the hotel, and they wouldn't let you, so they made you drink it at the security gates. I think just at the side of Margaritaville, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the one to get on the walkway to go over to the hotels. <laughs> now they start oh. chug, chug, yeah. chug, while Darren had to drink it down. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Good times. Yeah, I don't know. So I hope that yeah. helps anyway. Yes. Probably doesn't. We will do. <laughs> right, shall I take the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, podcast people. That's us. I've been listening for a few years now and want to say congratulations on the recent 200th episode. I originally started listening late in 2012 when I started thinking about a Florida trip for early 2014. We plan ahead. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I like to hear. And I wanted to update myself on the universal side of things in Orlando. I think this is around the time of your live broadcast for the Macy's Parade, and I've kept on listening ever since. It's certainly been a great time to be a Universal fan over the last few years. Our 2014 trip was a very memorable one, as it was our kids' first trip to Universal Park after many Disney trips, and they were a great age, seven and nine, for taking in the full Harry Potter experience along with everything else. One of my favourite aspects of that trip was the months leading up to the trip, as every week or two we would watch a movie to reduce or refresh the kids, to the characters and stories they'd be seeing in the parks. E.T., Simpsons movie, Men in Black, Spider-Man, Jurassic Park, Despicable Me, Shrek, and of course the first few Harry Potter movies. We even watched the Robin Williams Popeye movie as most kids today have no idea who Popeye is. Mm. Very true. I've never seen that film, actually. I have. Um, It really helped plus the experience and helped the kids get more out of the shows and attractions. The trip was great and we all had a great time. Our son has been obsessed with the big pink donut ever since. <laughs> I even managed to transport one home across the continent from Orlando to Vancouver on the west coast of Canada for same day eating when I had the chance to make a brief stop in Orlando last year on my own. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> with all that said, we are now planning our next trip back to Universal on much shorter notice. We'll be there in late August this year, staying for one night in Sapphire Falls, then moving to the Royal Pacific for two further nights to get the Unlimited Express Pass. This trip will be a little different in that my wife will be staying at home for work reasons and I'll be travelling as a single dad with an 11-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. I have a few questions you may be able to help with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, leave the children at home. (laughs) (laughs) It happens that our daughter's 10th birthday will be right in the middle of our universal stay. I'm trying to think of anything that will mark Anything that would be a good way to mark the day like a special meal somewhere or an activity that would be particularly appealing to a 10-year-old girl. If it were at Walt Disney World, I would have plenty of ideas, but I'm having a bit more trouble coming up with something at Universal. No Hello Kitty store, please. Our girl does like girl things. Our daughter does like girl things, but that place would be too much girly girl and cuteness for her. Mm-hmm. Do, you want, do you want to go through them all or do you want to... No, no, we'll tackle one at yeah. a time, otherwise I'll forget. Yeah. Hmm. A 10-year-old girl at Universal... Yeah. Hunter. Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Toothsome will be open then, won't it? Possibly. That would probably be pretty cool. You could probably get some things to add to a cake to create her own birthday cake. Possibly. Um, I was thinking um, Ollivanders, but I'm sure if you had a word with a team member on the way yeah. in, and mentioned mm-hmm. that it was her birthday, a special bit of magic might happen. Uh-huh. Good possibility on that. Um, Especially if she's... Well, if, if get right, definitely go to guest services before you go oh, into the park. Every day, get a button yep. with a birthday on. Do it every day you go, even if that, <laughs> even if it's not her birthday that specific day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They just keep the button from the first yes. day they go? Yeah, they can. She can just keep wearing it. Yeah. All right, look, yeah. I wasn't thinking. That's get, fine. I was going to say, get one for your son as well. She's going to be walking around with six well. birthday buttons by the <laughs> yeah. end of her vacation. <laughs> Why not? I was going to suggest maybe contacting the Hard Rock and seeing if they can do a special Chris, uh, Christmas, a special birthday lunch or something for her. Why the Hard yeah, Rock? Yeah, I mean, the bars are open an hour cool. later there. <laughs> out, of, yeah. Yeah, out of all the hotels, yeah, true. it's probably the coolest point. for a kid. Yeah. You know, if you get in touch with the kitchen staff, we know from experience they are amazing. Yes. You know, they might be true. able to come up with something. 
it's difficult. Maybe create it? something specially just for her. I don't know. I think don't know this, if you don't is, ask. this is the oh, thing. Yeah, get her the kitchen sink cake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the thing that where where Universal for me are lacking compared to Disney. Those special little things. I know they still do it to a certain extent, but stuff that you could go and set up beforehand, the Universal don't seem to be geared up for it as much as Disney do. Yeah. Like you, you can do little, you know, dessert things around the cinematic spectacular and those those kind of things, which would be that might be nice. Um, but they don't have you know as as many different options as Disney does, mm. like the the boutique and boutique and everything like that. So, um, but I don't know. Just I think the character meet and greets. If you if you know if he if he goes ahead of time and lets them know, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good point. You know, like, you know, yeah, hold, hold the spot in line here real quick, you know, and then they run up to the team member in the front and let them know that it's a birthday. Um, yeah. Like you like you guys do with the shows, um, you know, let a team member know when you're going into a show that it's your, that it's your daughter's birthday. Yeah. Uh, there's a good chance the cast might be able to stick around and take a picture with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, things like that. Um, do the NYB immigration tour. Just let her know, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know tell her it's. They're doing it just for her, you know. Yeah, oh, that's a that that is a cool yeah. idea actually. Oh, Ash has just idea. suggested that in there, but to not let her know that it's something everybody can do, and then yeah. sort of go, oh, yeah, we've set this up specially for you. Well, then you go, then Darren. You could also try and get someone to do the forest tour at ET, mm-hmm. uh, the production tour at Mummy. Mm-hmm. That'd be quite cool. Something yeah, that definitely. you wouldn't necessarily get to do every day. Yeah. Mentally running so, around and thinking. See, uh, there isn't there isn't an awful lot that you can kind of go in and and set up, can you? Really, um, like ahead of time, it's just stuff that you you're gonna sort of happen across while you're there, rather than being able to sort of plan ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You can have you can have it set up to you know have something uh, left back at the hotel room as well yeah. when you yeah. get home, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. Um, does it say if have you played the mini golf? Because that's really good fun you know yeah. that could that could be something if it's not something that you normally do that could be a, yeah. something good to do and then on somewhere to have something to eat well they say they're staying at sapphire falls and then royal pacific so i would contact both of those oh, hotels yeah. and let them know as well yeah mm. you know you might not get anything but if you do then it's a bonus yeah Certainly. hmm right this next one's so, for us Trace. okay so Next question. I'm anticipating some difficulty in that my son will ride anything while my daughter is more conservative. I would do the other way around, I think. Um, we'll all be fine with motion simulators and smaller courses without loops or large visible drops, but the Hulk, Dragon Challenge, Rip Ride Rocket will all be out. The mummy will be okay as she can't visually see a roaring coaster plummeting down a large drop. But it's not mm. that large a drop, really, is it? Mummy isn't, no. No. I'm thinking I will still be able to have my son ride big courses by going through the queue together, then he can ride while I wait with my daughter in the child swap area. Absolutely. I would love to ride myself as well, but I don't think leaving my 10-year-old and 11-year-old children unattended in a child swap room on their own will be responsible parenting. No. If they were a mm. couple of years older, maybe... <laughs> Not yet. Diet, Which, Darren. I know. Well, we've had the same, yeah. we've had the same dilemma, right. but they were actually a lot. I younger. was wondering the Magic Kingdom when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts or observations on how to cope with a one-parent, two smallish kids situation with one less adventurous rider? Jeez. Yes. Drug her and just take her on anywhere. No, I am <laughs> kidding. I am kidding. Before we get Do you think I have a uh, Uber for parental guardians? Did you just send her off in an Uber for 20 minutes and then come yeah. back while they're on the ride? <laughs> it's lockers. You, team member, come yeah. here. No. <laughs> no. Well, they've got, they've got vents in them. It's our birthday. You're ruining our trip. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to learn how to operate the ride, so let her operate the ride. <laughs> and, any, uh, and or any suggestions on encouraging my daughter to expand her world and try some new and more adventurous rides. For example, I spent 20 minutes in line with her at Space Mountain with her teetering on the edge of insanity over fear of the ride. Then within 10 seconds of launch, she was laughing and screaming that it's her favourite ride ever and we've been on 10 times since with no issues. Well, just before I forget... No, keep going. Get re- to the end of it. I was going to say, refer, when you're talking to her, refer yeah, back to yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, she does generally enjoy Space Mountain level of intensity rides, which I actually find 
quite intense. Because actually. it's in the dark, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but getting her over the fear of trying something for the first time is often such a battle it makes me feel like an abusive parent with all the tears and pleading and that's just from him Keep going. <laughs> uh, thanks for any advice and also the years of information and entertainment Darren Brown <gasps> no not Darren Brown <laughs> Vancouver oh. Canada what if he knows my auntie right <laughs> we've been in said position yes dragging Jade kicking and screaming onto men in black yes because you're abusive parents. Absolutely. Exactly. And you know what? She loved it. Yeah. It's knowing... It's awkward because we've got two kids that are very much like that. The thought of something... I think that's just kids. ...is always... Raymond was very, very much like that, that um, <laughs> the... This comment section is lit right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the idea of something was always way, way worse than oh, the actual yes. thing itself. So yeah. it's difficult because you do. We did feel like that abusive parent. You know, she was she was proper in hysterics, and it's just yeah. trying. It's to just the way the way it is now. Like just in the world and society. Because when I was ten years old, if I didn't want to ride a roller coaster, my dad would just like grab me by the back of the shirt and was like, "All right, it's time for you. You're you're over the high limit, so you're riding this coaster. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, this is happening, and it doesn't matter if I cried or screamed or did anything because nobody else cared <laughs> in the yeah. line. It was just like, oh, yep, another kid's right of passage. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a big deal. And also, you know, when I was ten, we'd have like a twenty mile radius, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Like, all right, just stick within 20 miles of us. You're okay. Yeah, the world's very different now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, so. ab- how about sitting down with her of the ones that are worrying the most and saying, okay, like whittling it down to which one are you most likely to maybe slightly consider and then just work with her on that one? Maybe Honestly, one. if, you know if it's probably Rip Red Rocket because yeah. that is the closest to an injury level. As really? far as the big coasters? I was actually ruling that one straight out because of that, that vertical. Initial... Yeah, and it's got a big drop. That's why I was ruling that one out. Yeah, well, I would the anticipation. Say... That's Kong. I mean, that's uh, Hulk right right off the bat. I, yeah. I would have said Hulk out of those three. Hulk was the best one. Really? I would say the first 30 seconds of that ride is probably the most intense on Yeah, on but then after that, it's all yeah. yeah, without a chance. Yeah, but it's such a fast launch. You don't you don't have that, like, anticipation building while you just, like, click, 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 yeah. click, all the way up. It's weird exactly. for me because I actually find Dragon Challenge, that lift hill, very serene almost. Yes. Because you're so high up yeah. and you're just looking around and observing it. Mm-hmm. But if her problem is the actual anticipation and the anxiety yeah. of the ride, then that might be the worst one. And yeah, your feet are dangling point. as well. Yes, that's probably not a good one. You don't to start feel on. as secure because I've been through all of this. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I used to be terrible. Like, if she does Space Mountain, she'll do the mummy. Oh, without a doubt. She'll do Gringotts, she'll do the mummy. It's really just those three big coasters that are going to be an issue. Yeah, ultimately, you know, if you want to have fun, just let her do what she wants to do. Yeah. And it's, that, not... it's that awkward thing, isn't mm-hmm. it? There isn't, there isn't that mid level between something like no. a mummy or a Forbidden Journey or a Gringotts. And no, then... I'd say, like at a park like Bush Gardens, there is kind of a level that you can go by. Okay, you can start here, 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 and then work your way up. Yeah. All of these are very, very different attractions. Mm hmm. Um, but uh, one thing I will say about like the child swap area, they usually have an employee in there, don't they? Um, yes, they do. Yeah, and it's like, and they'll, and then she will be in there for a total of maybe six, seven minutes, like however long it takes you to load onto the ride vehicle, ride the ride, and then get off. She's not like she has to wait there while you're in line. Uh, she waits in the line with you, which might not be something she wants to do particularly. Wait in the line to yeah. go sit in the swap area at the end. Um, but hey. Um, you know, if you want to give yourself the opportunity to do things, and if you want to, if you want to ride those, like I said, she would be there for a very short amount of time, and the employees are there. So, Ash brings up a good point. We can just turn on Pokemon Go, yeah, give her the cell phone, <laughs> and yeah. then she's set. It's tough, isn't it? Because it's, it is. Yes, you can sort of build her up. Watch the videos on YouTube. You know, talk about them that way, and then there you go. That might be a really That's good a really thing to do. Watch idea. the POV videos, and then now I. Especially if you got a virtual reality headset. Um, now, I kind of understand where she's coming from, though, because for me, I could ride something like Ash mentioned here, Rock and Roller Coaster, way before I could ride something like a Hulk. It's 
actually seeing the attraction that freaked me out, not necessarily the attraction itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go then, mm-hmm. blindfold. Blindfold, <laughs> exactly. The, the daredevil go. experience. Yeah. Every roller coaster is the daredevil experience. Yeah. It's yeah, it's one of those. It's a tough one because kids are kids, and if they don't want to ride it, they will go kicking and screaming, you know. And it's even if they really want to, sometimes they get into a stubborn frame of mind and yeah. don't do what you need them to do. There's always bribery. Yeah. If you've got a local theme park that has smaller m- intermediate ones, take it there first. Yeah, you could try that. Now oh, I'm curious nice. if this problem no, just no, extends from roller coaster. Oh, sorry. Nice from Canada. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, I'm wondering if this is just roller coasters, nice because if not, if she's really just scared of drops and things like that, that might kind of knock a lot out as far as Islands it's of like Adventure no, is yeah, concerned. Yeah, no loops as well. Because you got to yeah. knock out River Adventure, you could knock out Dudley do right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I think those are... Uh, I don't know. When I was a kid, that was easier for me to handle than like yeah. just a straight up roller coaster. So, and like you said, if you don't have to sit there and watch the thing happen over and over again, like you're not going to see the Dudley drop a whole lot of times unless you sit there and, and yeah. you know, watch it. You have enough time to be like, all right, let's just run through here. Oh, look what this is. You know, let's go on this ride real quick. So, yeah. Um, it's a possibility. Yeah, they're not, I'm going to say the kids aren't from the UK, so unfortunately, you can't get them drunk. No. Um, no, not like the UK children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I think we've done that one, haven't we? I shall move on. I'm not going to do an accent on this one. <laughs> it says, <laughs> Hey, Doc Schmidt and Hunter McFly, please jump into your DeLorean and jump forward to Universal in August 2017. What will it be like? Will we be floating on clouds like Monkey for Monkey Magic? Seriously, we're booked into the Hard Rock for four nights at a cost of £1,050. I don't think that's relevant, but anyway. <laughs> um, what can we expect to be open by August 2017, and what do you expect to have closed? Where would you guys eat if money was no object, and are we having another pint? Keep it real, Craig Lucas. Um... I'm going to be honest, my favorite restaurant in the actual parks right now is Lombard's. I think it's a really good value, and I think the food is delicious every single time I go. It is okay. pretty good. For in the parks, yes. I would say that that's, that's one of the tops. I also really like Mythos. I know Lee thinks it's overrated, but no, as far as that. atmosphere and views on the park and the food quality for the price, I think it's a really good so value. You want one drink? I never said that. Myth- uh, oh, Mythos we're talking about, sorry. Mm. I was getting yeah. confused with Confisco there for a second. <laughs> I never said Mythos was overrated. It's Tracy who said that. Mm-hmm. I like Mythos. But by August 2017, um, you should we should have uh, Toothsome. We should definitely be open. Mm-hmm. Well, that will definitely be open. Um, that might be the only announced thing that's open by then, right? Well, Fallon. Fallon. Jimmy Fallon's ride will be open. Hulk. Fallon. Hulk and Fallon, definitely. Volcano Bay. Fast and Furious got pushed back to 2018, right? Yep. 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 So that one will not be open. What are we expecting to be closed? I think is the bigger answer. Are T2. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be up. up. For refurbs. Yeah. T2. If T2. you guys are still saying Terminator 2 is the spot yeah. for that, then I That guess. room is getting stronger and stronger. When they pull that attraction, Walking Dead is going up in less than six months. I yeah, promise yeah. you. Yeah. Mean that that'll go before Men in Black, but... I would so rather see, if they're going to do Walking Dead, I know you guys love Men in Black, I would rather see a shooter-style attraction. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be too bothered if they got rid of Men in Black as long as it was this, a similar sort of attraction. Now, Ash brings up in the in the group that Shrek has to be gone soon. Mm-hmm. The only thing with so. that is, if they're pulling T2 to put the Walking Dead attraction like we're all expecting, it doesn't really fit on that family-friendly entryway to Universal, does it? No. That's true. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah, don't, don't be mistaken, like, right now, Shrek it has some, like, really long wait times. Um, don't be mistaken that for people actually being interested in it. It's got a very slow load, mm-hmm. and they only have one theater open right now because they're getting ready for Halloween or Night. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's something, like, that, <laughs> that's something that will always play into that area as well. They'll always have it in the, in the sort of the back of the minds with whatever they do with that Shrek building that they do use it for a horror mm-hmm. night's maze. 
I'm still, my dream is still that they demo that area and they put in a great movie ride style attraction, but that's all blue sky stuff. I mean, have things changed now as far as kid zone now that they've got that plot of land down by the convention center? That's true. Because originally that's where we heard Nintendo was going. Has that now all changed? Yeah. I do not know. Um, but yeah, if money was no object, I think I would probably want to check out Emeralds. Yeah. Try to think where else. I'm trying to think, like, earlier, like, money, no object places, because Emeralds else would pretty much eat <laughs> So, <laughs> anywhere else, I'm nice. pretty much pretty reasonable. reasonable. What can I get pretty cheap? You know, not too bad. I really enjoyed our experience at Antihedo. I was just going to say, yeah, was was No, yeah. I really enjoyed that. That was great. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing Portofino probably has a pretty nice restaurant in there. They've got Mama Della's. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be really good. I'll let you know how the food is at Sapphire Falls. Uh-huh. Yes. I'll yeah. be trying out at least one meal there. I picked the Crystal Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Darren. Oh, sorry. And yes, we're <laughs> having another pint or two or three. Cool. Yeah, I'll watch you guys drink them. Mm, you can have a pint of water. It doesn't say what you have to have a pint of, Hunter. I think it'll be delicious. Kind of a pint of milkshakes. I think if we'd have had this question six months ago, things might have been different. But now with that plot of land down there, I think they're, what their planning has changed. I think it's... Mm, I think we're going to see a secret life of pets, especially seeing as though it's had a very strong opening. Yeah. It's just a weird concept for me. Every day you come home, you have these pets that greet you around at the door, and now they want to base a an attraction on it. You know, I know it's effectively what Disney, did, what Pixar did with Toy Story, mm-hmm. Illumination are doing with pets. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Hunter, have you seen it? Secret Life of Pets. Yeah. I was supposed to go. I went and saw Ghostbusters instead. Yeah. Go see Ghostbusters. It was great. We're not talking mm-hmm. about that. Darren, have you seen it? Nope. No. It ties into Universal. It does. You're right. We will see it at some point, I hope. Mm. Yes, I hope. All right. Well, I guess uh, that's going to do it for this episode here. Yep. Uh, thank you to everyone sending questions in. So for uh, Meg, Maureen, Michael, Danny, Craig, wait, me. Oh, I'm going to be in. <laughs> I'll still put you in there as well anyway yeah so for Meg, Maureen, Michael, Darren the other Darren, not Darren uh, Craig, Tracy, Hunter, Lee Darren. I'm also Don't Darren Darren, Darren Michael Aiello, why not <laughs> no it's the fifth hotel <laughs> yeah, it's the fifth hotel and this has been the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast that's it for another unofficial Universal Orlando podcast Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing on iTunes, and while you're there, please leave us a rating and a review. Listen to us on Stitcher, Google Play, and all your podcast apps. Email us with any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com, or even better, record your message at speakpipe.com slash uuopodcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest, keyword uuopodcast. Check out our blog for even more content at uuopodcast.com. And finally, our sponsors, Fairy Godmother Travel, are here to help with all your universal vacation needs. So check them out today at fairygodmothertravel.com. Well, that's a wrap. See you next week.